Good morning, and welcome to St. Charles. Let us offer together our prayer for a better understanding of true stewardship in our lives and here in our parish. Lord God, you alone are the source of every good gift, of the vast array of our universe and the mystery of each human life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender, faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent, our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Our presider this morning is our pastor, Father Philip Rogers. Please join us in our opening hymn found in the worship aid. We gather together. Please stand. Son, 
A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord.
my soul at rest, the God who is my help. The Lord is my rock, my strength, and my hope, my fortress, my God. In God alone is my soul. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded. 
and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark at that time John said to Jesus teacher we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us Jesus replied do not prevent him there is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me for whoever is not against us is for us Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. It's one of the great American novels, probably the greatest novel of the American West. At nearly 900 pages, Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove is a heavy lift, but well, well worth it. If you're looking for something good to read this winter, and don't kid yourself, it's not that far away. You could do much worse than Lonesome Dove. Even the miniseries from 
about 30 years ago is worthwhile, but not as good as the book. The novel is populated with some of the greatest characters in American fiction, among whom Jake Spoon might well be the most pathetic. Jake, a former Texas Ranger lawman, just wants to spend his days gambling, but unfortunately for him, he's not very good at it. So after losing a large amount of money, Jake joins up with a gang in Fort Worth, Texas, heading up to Nebraska to rob banks, with Jake convincing himself no one really gets hurt in a bank robbery. Soon, however, Jake discovers he is actually hooked up with nothing more than a gang of brutal horse thieves and murderers. It falls to his former friend, his friends and former cohorts from the Texas Rangers to track the gang down. And when they finally catch them, they pronounce the judgment of the West. They are all condemned to be hanged. Jake pleads with his friends for mercy, claiming he didn't mean any harm and that he was just looking for safe company to get across Indian territory. To which Gus, one of the heroes of the book, Gus tells him, sorry, Jake, you crossed the line. But Gus, Jake pleads, I didn't see no line. In harsh and hard terms, Jesus points out the line in this day's gospel. Using words like cutting off and plucking out, Jesus is attempting, strongly attempting, to help his disciples and to help us understand there is a line between what God asks of us, the things of God, so to speak, and those things that are not of God, that lead us away from God. We are urged by Jesus in this section of St. Mark's Gospel to take notice of that line, to take notice of that which is directing us toward God and that which is directing us away from God. We need to see the line and to keep ourselves from crossing that line. So if we are not going to literally pluck anything out or lop anything off, which we most certainly are not, we must still strive to keep on the correct side of the law, to always move toward that which we know brings us closer to God. We are to be then people who are interested in the welfare of others, not in self-enrichment or aggrandizement. We are to be people who seek to uplift family, community, and not enrich bank accounts in large ways and most especially in small ways. We can continue to bring about God's love and forgiveness in our world. We can make real the concern and the comfort that comes from a loving God. But that will happen only if we stay on the correct side of the line by cherishing family, friendship, community, by bringing peace into the li our lives and the lives of others, by being courageous in the face of difficulty and assisting others to do the same. We make the presence of God active and alive in our world. That is for us. That must be for us. That line that we never, ever cross. God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. We lift our prayers to the God of love. That all chosen to lead our church do so with loving compassion and service, we pray. That those in government service regard all human life with sacred respect, we pray. That people who feel their life has no meaning receive understanding and loving care, we pray. That all priests who have ministered faithfully and honorably may know our appreciation on this Priesthood Sunday, we pray. For Albert Pallotta, whom we remember in this Mass, and for Ronald Voss, Elizabeth Bannon, and Richard T. Catch, whom we remember who were buried this week. May all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace, we pray. For the needs we hold within our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all mercy, look lovingly upon these our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that these are gifts of bread and wine may be acceptable to God, our good and loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might see and love in us what you see and love in Christ. Your gifts of grace, lost by disobedience, are now restored by the obedience of your Son. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exaltation, we acclaim. Divine teaching, we dare. 
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for coming to celebrate with us this morning, especially those who ministered for us at our Mass today. Special greetings to anyone who might be visiting with us at St. Charles this weekend. Next Saturday, October 2nd at 3.30 p.m., St. Charles will host the recitation of the rosary with a blessing of all rosaries. All are welcome next Saturday prior to the 4 p.m. Mass at 3.30. Next Sunday, October 3rd, there will be the blessing of pets at 2 p.m. in front of the church under the portico. Bring all of your special friends for our pet blessing. Directions for attaining access to our parish form to come is available in this week's bulletin. If you have any questions, 
someone will be at the form table in the gathering space right after Mass. They will be happy to assist you. You can join our formed account through the directions in the bulletin. If you have any questions, someone at the formed table in the gathering space after Mass will be happy to answer them. Have a good week, everyone. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.